Go. Sabonani Proctor family. My name is Reverend Dr. Michael Elam, and I have the honor under the leadership of Dr. Ivor Carruthers, Dr. Jeremiah A. Wright Jr., Dr. Freddie Haynes III, and the Proctor staff in introducing the Samuel DeWitt Proctor Conference inaugural initiative for June. PPP, Proctor Pride Prayer Demic. For the month of June, the Proctor Conference will lift every voice and celebrate the diaspora of LGBTQIA voices and an ally or two under the lens of the Black aesthetic and sacred memory. I am indeed honored to collaborate and guest host for this groundbreaking event. Proctor family, please join us every day in the month of June to hear, support, and help uplift every voice in our community. In addition to PPP, Proctor is also engaging in a new shift with the Mary Rustin Social Justice Initiative, named after Pauli Murray, an African-American civil rights activist, attorney, women's rights activist, and an Episcopal priest, and Bayard Rustin, a Quaker and American leader in social movements for civil rights, socialism, nonviolence, and gay rights. The Institute will foster and develop relationships focusing on holistic living for LGBTQIA and non-gender conforming persons. We have experienced trauma from non-affirming and non-religious communal spaces. The Institute will also forge a healthy dialogue and practice around sexuality in ch black church spaces between the LGBTQIA and non-gender conforming community and clergy persons. Proctor family, please join us in June for PPP and be on the lookout for future updates on the Mary Rustin Social Justice Initiative. Thank you. Amen. Good morning, Proctor family, and welcome to the Proctor Pride Prayer Demic. Today is Monday, June 7th, and as you heard all month long, we are celebrating Pride Month, and whether you are on Facebook, on YouTube, or any other social media outlet, we are so thankful you're with us this morning. We want to invite you to visit our website, sdpconference.info, and we'd also like you to receive text message updates from the Samuel DeWitt Proctor Conference, and you can do so by texting SDPC to the number 84576. We promise we will only use your number for sharing information. And if you know anyone who does not have access to the internet, please let them know that they can listen to this service today at noon and 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time by dialing the number 909-318-7011. And family, we also want you to know that there are funds available to get folks connected to the internet. Please visit blackchurchesforbroadband.org or you can go to the Proctor Conference Facebook page to learn more about that initiative. Thank you so much. And now to our host, Reverend Dr. Michael Elam. Good morning, Sabanani. Thank you, Reverend Webb. Sabanani, we see you, we respect you, we value you, you are important to us. Isaiah 56, thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. Happy is the mortal who does this, the one who holds it fast who keeps the Sabbath, not profaning it, and refrains from doing any evil. Do not let the foreigner joined to the Lord say, the Lord will surely separate me from his people. And do not let the eunuch say, I am just a dry tree. For thus says the Lord, to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbath, who choose the things that please me and hold fast my covenant, I will give you in my house and within my walls, a monument and a name better than sons and better than daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. And the foreigners 
who join themselves to the Lord to minister him to the love of the name of the Lord and be his servants. All who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar and my house, my house, my house, the Lord's house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcast of Israel, who gathers others to them beside those already gathered. We serve a God who is inclusive. We serve a God who has an arm stretched out for all of his peoples, all of his peoples. He says, all are camp, all are in the people, or all are his people in the house of prayer. So we, we serve a God who is inclusive, who is inclusive, who is inclusive, and no one is left behind. Our prayer warrior this morning is Carmarian D. Anderson Harvey. She is a vibrant and visible trans woman of color with a compassion for inclusion and equality for all. Kamarian is the Alabama State Director with Human Rights Campaign, HRC, under the Project One America Initiative. Kamarian becomes the first trans person of color to serve in a leadership role with HRC in the organization's history. Before joining HRC and relocating to Alabama, Carmarion worked in the field of public health and education in Texas, managing both local and national prevention initiatives, focusing on HIV AIDS and other health disparities that impact marginalized communities. Carmarion is the founder and previous executive director for Black Trans Women Inc., which is the first national nonprofit organization with a 501c3 status. With a programmatic, with a program focused to uplift the voices and hearts and souls of Black trans women, and alliance with the Black Trans Advocacy Coalition, Carmarion also brings a wealth of experience in faith spaces. Currently serving as the National Co-Minister and South Regional Coordinator for Trans Saints Ministry of the Fellowship of Affirming Ministries (TFAM), Carmarion has served as an Associate Elder Minister at the Living Faith Covenant Church in Dallas, Texas for 15 years before relocating to Alabama. Carmarion was reared in Dallas, Texas with family roots in Natchez, Mississippi. Carmarion is a wife, has one son, four bonus sons, and three adorable grandchildren. After the Minister of Music this morning, Opal Stables, the next voice you will hear is Carmarion. Our prayer warrior will be Carmarion. D. Anderson Harvey, hear ye them. Good morning. Ooh. Come on, let's just worship a little bit. You ready? Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Yeah, 
know that's my testimony. I think I, we can be here for hours and days, but I am a living Ayabasha testimony. I bring you greetings all the way from the deep south of Alabama, and it is an honor to be here. So I like to always start out because I'm good Pentecostal. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. And that's a commandment, okay? And on this particular day, it is just a great opportunity on this Monday morning to rise with the sun, and to be in worship with the Lord. The scripture says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting door, that the king of glory may come in. Ah, I feel it now. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. The Lord of hosts, the almighty God, is the king of glory. I really want to take this opportunity to give thanks to the Proctor family and the capable leadership to the logistic coordinators of the Proctor Pride Paradigmic, my sister Jerry L. Wright and my brother Reverend Dr. Mike Elam and their colleagues. We honor their diligent and faithful work that they have offered and the wonderful prayer warriors that who have came before me this day and after me. Thank you, Proctor Conference, for assuring that we take the time to recognize God's diversity in humanity and sharing our spiritual gift, because this is a spiritual thing, I promise you, it is, of radical inclusion in the world. I am honored as a Black woman, Holy Ghost field, water baptized. Can I just take you there down my journey? to be before you to offer this prayer on this Monday, June the 7th. When I was given the invitation, oftentimes I have to fight and combat bad theology um, and uplift it with, with liberation theology, or perhaps as, as Bright Divinity likes to call me, a trans theologian. And I was like, God, please give me something that the people will be encouraged this month, but particularly my transgender community that is so often left out of the world, so often left out in scriptures, 
so often left out in the hermeneutics of being just a creation of God's good gift. And so three things that I want to be able to touch on in my prayer is this month's pride, what that really means for us who are marginalized within the marginalized community of LGBTQ, because this month, every day can be trauma for a person like me and my community, because we have to combat so much just to live and to be in pride. Also, I wanna pray for our visibility and safety and I want my allies and co-conspirators to understand that we are your responsibility because in the Bible, we are the ones that is being called the least among us. June is Pride Month, a month where people from all over recognize and celebrate the LGBTQ community and a month of to raise awareness of the inequalities and disparity that still reside today in the LGBT plus community. Oftentimes, we bring out visibility. And as a woman of trans experience, when I think of pride, I can't help but to think about the access through visibility that often my community is ignored, being able to show up in their truth. As I like to call it, we are God's chosen generation, where we have to fight to be seen, be heard, take seriously, and educate so many people, different people, all walks of life about who we are in the name of freedom and good. I think of amazing liberation activists and pioneers like the Queens, Mother Marsha P. Johnson and Mo Mother Silva Rivera and our present pioneer, Miss Major Griffin Grayson. And because of their faithfulness, to be the voice in the wilderness toward inclusion and their sacrifice that each of them have made each day, they have birthed a movement. That's why we can celebrate pride. They birthed a movement for us to be free and visible in the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. It's a God thing. And so because of that, they have also birthed other leaders like myself and leaders today that continue towards teaching and promoting reconciliation, freedom and justice, known as the transgender community. The T that's behind every other acronym, but yet the most marginalized because it's in the back. But I promise you that we were ordained by the Most High, our Creator. People who continue to stand in the gap of hate and discrimination daily on the front line of liberation theology, faith, and trans justice leaders. And I wanna call them out because this is an opportunity to put some presence and some thanksgiving into these souls who sacrifice every day to out themselves. And rather than them seeing Jesus in us, they have to use bad theology, excuse me, theology to send us to a place that we are experiencing every day. I lift up Reverend Lewis Mitchell, Reverend Valerie Spencer, Reverend Monica Cross, Re Reverend Lamb Hooper, Reverend Chris Page, Reverend Jonathan Thunderword, Reverend Lawrence Richard, Reverend Allison Robinson, Reverend Brendan Boone, and so many more that I could continue ca to call names. We take this time on this day, this pride day, to thank you for your visibility and leadership, for simply saying yes to your call when it was not popular to be carrying the gospel of inclusion to a world that mocked and killed us and kill our truth. Least among us. I'm often reminded in the New Testament where Jesus and the disciples are ministering and teaching to a large gathering. And the disciples' responsibility is to aid those that are least among them, but yet they wanted to send them away. I wonder, do we have some disciples that just sent us away? And this Pride Month, I'm asking you, don't send us away, but feed us. Because Jesus told the disciples, we're not going to send them away. You feed them. That's our responsibility. I need more co-conspirators to feed us 
and it may not be food, but it could be the disparity of the lack of housing, the lack of our health, because we often show up and so discriminated that we are erased from all things, including federal dollars. I, I think I need to call it out to call it in. It is important that you feed them. That is the commandment that God is giving all of us to be the hands and feet of Christ in the earth. So I leave you with this. Do recognize that the transgender community is here. Daily we are dying with high rates of violence and murder, with, with 129 state legislation just this year to try to erase our humanity and everything that God made was made good. Let us go into prayer. In the name of the Father, our Mother God, Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Almighty God, maker of heaven and earth, our parent God, as we enter this pride month, this season, this once a month that recognize who we are, we are so forever grateful for you, God, for creating such a masterpiece of diversity that is doing your work, living out the truth of who we are through you. Thank you for being so ever present, so ever caring, encouraging our nation through a time of reflection, learning, and awareness, knowing you have created all of us through your radical love and acceptance, and in the diversity to demonstrate you, your presence in the earth. Thank you for this month of pride. We thank you for the Holy Ghost, but we also thank you for that heel that was thrown many years ago to give us a voice to say we are who we are. I am who I am. And we want to thank you for those pioneers. We want to thank you for those current leaders of trans experience to our allies and to our co-conspirators that is giving us our rightful place on the front line to say that we are who we are. And through you, God, we know that you did not make a mistake. In essence, God, what you did was allow us to be the, in the community of diverse people in order for us to be able to empathize as you did in the New Testament, sitting on both sides, being able to be a voice in the wilderness, to be able, God, to be the example of what true holiness of wholeness is here in the earth. Oh. And so, God, we thank you for the visibility of our community. We thank you, God, that you continue to protect us, that you continue to guide us, and that you continue to make us strong. God, we are the least among those. And because we are the least among those, God, I ask that you continue to cover us with your blood, continue to strengthen us, and encourage us to continue to live. Merciful God, hear our prayers so that the message of pride in all of us can stand strong, that we all can be in our rightful place of being who we are and how you created us. Lord, bless us and keep us and make your face shine on us. And may the peace of God, which extends all understanding, guard our heart and our minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you for that wonderful prayer.
what can I do? I can't live without you. I can't live without you. Tell me what can I do? Oh, I can't live without you. I can't live without you. So tell me what can I do? I can't live without you, no. I can't live without you. Here's my heart. Here's my mind. I give you my soul, Lord. Need you to take control. Cause I tried it all. I tried it on my own, but what I found is I can make it. On my own, on my own, I can't make it, no, we can't make it on our own, no, on our own, we can make it, you can make it, no, so tell me, what can I do? You. I can't live without you. Oh, tell me what can I do, Lord? I can't live without you, yeah. I can't live without you. So here's my heart, here's my mind. I give you my soul, Lord. Ain't gonna take control, cause I tried it all. Tried it on my own, but what I found is, yeah, I can make it on my own, on my own, Lord. I can make it, I can make it on my own, on my own, Lord. I can make it, no, no. I can make it. Ooh, oh, tell me, what can I do? I can't live without you, no. I can't live without you. So tell me, what can I do? I can't live without you, God. I can't live without you. Tell me. What you want me to do, Lord? I can't live. So tell me what can I do for you? I can't live without the Lord. I don't want to be out His will. Tell me, oh, tell me what I can't live without. I can't live without him. Oh, 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 Without you, say it. I can't walk without you. I can't talk without you. You say it. I can't talk. Yes. I can't sing without you. I'm nothing without you, God. You say it. I can't live without you, no, no. you, Lord, yeah. I can't be, I can't be without you, God. And Lord, I'm convinced there's no me without you, yeah. I can't walk without you, yeah, yeah. 
Cause I've tried it all, tried it on my own, but when I found it, yeah, I can make it. So tell me, what can I do? That should be our question. We can live without you. We can live without you. Stop looking and ask. Lord, tell me what you want me to do, God. I can't live without you. We can't live, no. Amen. 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 What? We can't do without you. We can't do without you. God calls on us. God gives us, God calls on us to do great work. The Holy Spirit gives us the tools to do that great work. And the ancestors just speak out loud and say, lean in. We thank you for this morning. We thank um, Opal Staples. We thank Reverend Kamarian. Kamarian, we thank, the, we thank them this morning for the song and the worship and prayer. Please support um, Proctor Conference in this work. This is a great work that we do. Um, I am pleased to be a part of this work. I am pleased to be a nourished in the, this work, I have grown in this work. The Samuel Direct Proctor Conference has ministered to me over the years in this great work. So please support the work of the Samuel Direct Proctor Conference by donating via our website at sdpcconference.info forward slash invest contribute. You can also be found on Giveify, search Samuel DeWitt Proctor Conference. Your donations support the work for justice and vision of the Samuel DeWitt Proctor Conference. So we are grateful to you, to, to you and to be in community with us. We give you thanks this morning. We give you thanks and all praise this morning, this morning, this morning, this morning. Once again, I wanna thank uh, Minister Kamarian D. Anderson Harvey, who gave us a voice that is marginalized within the marginalized community. And this Proctor Conference has highlighted that. This Proctor Conference initiative, PPP, has opened the door for all voices to come forward and, and, to, and say, I am that I am, and we are who we are. We be who we be. We is who we is. So we give them thanks this morning as being a part of this community of faith and this community of justice and righteousness and to continue to serve a God of inclusion. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present yourself before this glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our savior, be glory, majesty, dominion and power through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages now and but forevermore. Amen, amen, a woman and a shed. Enjoy your day.